I had feared that the humans might attack as soon as our ships enter the Sol system, but the fact that we were still here was a good sign. The Federation Senate had narrowly voted to confront the Terrans, with Speaker Ula being one of the most ardent supporters of the motion. Even with her political pull, many representatives were on the fence about taking action. The fate that had befallen the devourers could easily be ours as well, if we provoked the humans. Honestly, I think if it were their own species being summoned to action, the Senate would not have passed the proposal. But as always, they assumed that the Jedari, the Asenic, and the Hodeal would do their dirty work while they stood by and watched from the safety of their offices. I was less than thrilled about leading this mission. After all, we were risking Federation lives to protect the very people that had sought to destroy us. While the Terran solution was extreme, I could at least understand where they were coming from. But it would be dishonorable to refuse a direct order. The last thing I wanted was to be branded a traitor and a coward. Besides, if I commanded the fleet, I would at least be level-headed enough not to charge into battle against a superior army. I wasn't sure my cohorts, who had not witnessed human weaponry in action firsthand, would be so cautious, especially given that most Jatari officers viewed diplomacy as an admission of weakness. First Officer Blaise glanced up from his computer as we passed the first of the outer planets. Sir, we are almost within missile range of Earth. Should we ready our weapons? Our orders are to stop them, not to attack them. If we get into a direct fight, we're doomed, I replied. Let's hope that the humans still like talking. Hail Terran Command! Blaise opened his mouth to argue, then thought better of it. He silently input a few commands into his terminal, muttering under his breath. The few moments that the call went unanswered were nerve, racking. I feared that the humans would simply ignore us. Relief washed over me as a familiar face blinked onto the view screen. Commander Rykoff did not look well. His black hair was disheveled, his uniform was wrinkled, and dark circles had taken up residence under his eyes. This was a far cry from the radiant and confident man who had come to our rescue yesterday. It seemed that he should be resting rather than on the bridge of a ship, but I feared pointing out his condition would cause offense. The human officer stared into the camera, a pleading look on his face. General, we strongly advise you to turn your ships around and stand aside. I can't do that. What you're about to do is wrong. Intelligent life is sacred, and killing off an entire species is a crime against sentience, I said. The devourers have hardly shown that they are sapient. I'm surprised you of all people would rush to their defense, Rykoff mused. It hasn't even been a full day since they wiped out thousands of your ships. You and I both know if we hadn't shown up, they would have killed all of you without a second thought. I flinched. Don't remind me. For all that they've done, I don't want to see an entire species slaughtered. That makes us just as bad as them. Their actions don't make yours right. Commander Rykoff sighed. Well, it seems we're at an impasse. I assume you're going to attack us if we don't stand down. We just want to talk. You don't have to do this. Your species has a moral code, right? I took a deep breath trying to collect my thoughts. What if there are innocent people, children, and civilians on their home world? Look, I don't like what we're about to do, but I have my orders. We don't even know if they have civilians or if they can show emotion. Exactly. We don't know. What's the harm in waiting and getting more information? Don't you want to know why they're doing this? I'd like to understand. Rykoff tilted his head as though thinking. I suppose it wouldn't hurt to gather some intelligence. Hell, it might come in handy down the road. What would you suggest? Do you think you can capture one of their ships? We need to bring one of them in alive. Yeah, I think we can do that, General. What would you say to joining us in person on our flagship? We would rather stand together than as enemies. I weighed my options. This could easily be some sort of human trickery 
luring the highest-ranking Federation officer to their headquarters just to be imprisoned. Taking me out of the picture would disrupt our fleet's command. It was only natural to find their offer a bit suspect. But I figured if Rykov's intentions toward us were malicious, we wouldn't be having this dialogue in the first place. The Terrans had the ability to knock out our entire fleet in one fell swoop, yet they had not fired on us. At any rate, I still owed the commander a great debt for saving my life. The least I could give him was a bit of trust. I'd be happy to join you, Commander, I answered. The hint of a smile crept onto Rykov's face. Excellent. We'll await your shuttle. Come alone and unarmed. Please order your ships to halt their advance and allow us passage. The transmission ended, and First Officer Blaise immediately piped up. Sir, you can't seriously be thinking of going over there. I scowled at him, not appreciating my decisions being called into question. I have to. It's our only chance at talking the humans down. And it will be the first time anyone has spoken with the enemy firsthand. Of course, any insight I could glean into the Devourer's nature would be priceless to the Federation. But I would be lying if I said my curiosity wasn't personal. I delighted in the possibility of demanding their reasons myself. Mass murder was not the solution, but our foes needed to be held accountable for the losses they had inflicted. Two Terran soldiers were waiting in the airlock as my shuttle docked. The pat-down they gave me felt a bit. Invasive, but I suppose they just wanted to be thorough. Once they were satisfied that there were no weapons on my person, they led the way to the bridge. Compared to Federation vessels, the Terran flagship was downright ugly on the inside. The passageways were cramped, and the colors were a drab mix of gray and off-white. It was evident the humans gave little consideration to design elements, rather focusing on packing the warship with as many weapons and stations as possible. I couldn't help but feel a bit claustrophobic as we navigated through a series of winding corridors and tight staircases. The hallway finally opened up into a wider chamber, which was lined with rows of computer monitors and a holographic display at the center. My first thought was that I had never seen such a disorderly command center in my life. Dozens of personnel were bustling about the place, tablets in hand, shouting at each other. How could they even function amid such noise and chaos? Commander Rykoff was at the heart of this madness, studying a projection of the Devourer fleet. Two officers stood by his side. From what I overheard, it seemed that they were providing rough estimates of enemy capabilities and reviewing a plan. I grimaced and rubbed my forehead as I walked over to them. A headache was already setting in from the commotion. Welcome aboard, General. Rykoff didn't look away from the holomap for a second, so I wasn't quite sure how he spotted my approach. We'll be leaving in a few moments. I trust you won't give us any trouble. Sit back and enjoy the show. All right, everyone to your stations. Rykov's voice raised to a booming shout carrying over the background chatter. Set course for system 1964. A. Weapon systems on high alert. Boarding party standby. In an instant, all conversation ceased and the crewmates scrambled to their posts. A silent, attentive team replaced the mayhem in a flash. I marveled at how drastic of a shift it was, watching as they executed their assignments with trained efficiency. The duality of humanity was as evident in their day-to-day -day operations as it was in their martial policy. A familiar, sinking feeling clasped my stomach as we slipped into hyperspace. There was a strange rattling noise echoing from the walls, suggesting that the ship was pushing the upper limits of its warp speed. The human craft leapt back to real space in a matter of minutes, on the fringes of Devourer territory. Our sensors are detecting a formation of sixteen ships on patrol trajectory. Within weapons range, sir, a young officer called out. Commander Rykov nodded. Very good. I want all of the ships but one destroyed before they know what hit them. We disable the last and board here. We need systems online so imps are off the table. Stick with conventional weapons. Let's go. I watched out the viewport as hundreds of missiles sailed toward the fleet. 
An indicator flashed on the display tracking the target locks. It seemed that the computer was remotely piloting the weapons. The patrol ships pivoted around to face us, firing kinetic rounds in an attempt to destroy the projectiles. Their bullets connected with a few missiles, but with only seconds to react, there was no way to take out all of them. The human explosives punched through the metallic devourer hulls like they were paper. The force of multiple simultaneous detonations ripped them down to their skeletons, tossing deformed metal in all directions. The only ship that remained was the straggler at the rear of the formation. A single projectile clipped the last cruiser, tearing a gash in its side. There was no way the vessel could jump away while venting atmosphere. A human transport approached the crippled ship. It was unclear what the boarding party would face inside, but after the unfettered might I had witnessed again, I had confidence that any devourer resistance would be put down with little trouble. Rykov tapped his foot impatiently as his men swept the craft. Team leader, status report, please. Sir, we found two unconscious enemy combatants on board. Life support appears to have been shut off. A gruff male voice crackled over the speaker. We didn't hit their computer or their power. They did this to themselves. What? Attempting suicide rather than being captured? The commander trailed off. Get them back to your ship at once. Try to resuscitate them. Yes, sir. We're on it. I frowned in confusion. Why would the devourers switch off their life support? Perhaps it was about honor, but it made no sense to opt for slow suffocation over a simple bullet to the brain. I had to hope that the human medics were as proficient as their soldiers. There were so many questions to ask, but dead men wouldn't give us any answers. The devourers did not look so fearsome in person. They were short, stocky bipeds who seemed like nothing out of the ordinary compared to most Federation races. Their height would only put them up at about the average human shoulders, and their skin was a pale lavender hue. I had no doubt that the lean, muscled Terran soldiers could toss them around if they wanted to. Had the boarding party taken the enemy ship just a few minutes later, we would have been left empty, handed. As it were, the humans had only been able to revive one of the two occupants. Our prisoner was then transported back to the flagship and moved to the medical wing, where he was restored to stable condition. He was kept restrained and would be guarded round. The clock by watchful sentries. I tagged along with Commander Rykov as he headed toward Med Bay. It would be interesting to witness human interrogation tactics. After seeing the cruel pleasure in their eyes during battle, I wondered if they would torture the prisoner for information. It certainly was within the realm of possibility. An assistant handed the commander a cup filled with steaming brown liquid as we walked. When I inquired as to what it was, he explained that it was called coffee and was a mild stimulant. I simply nodded, not wanting to offend my host. Internally, however, I thought it was an extremely poor taste for an officer to be consuming drugs on duty. It was a bad example to set for his subordinates. The prisoner was just stirring as we arrived at our destination. He looked a bit disoriented, but oddly enough, he was not struggling against the restraints. A laptop was stationed by his bedside, with an audio capture running on screen. Will our translation software work? I whispered to Rykov. The human shrugged in response. It should. Our program has gone over all their transmissions that we have on record, and hopefully it was able to decipher their language from that. The enemy captive spoke a few syllables of gibberish, and the computer piped up in galactic common a second later. The two words chilled me to the bone. It said, help us. Commander Rykov blinked in confusion. Help you? Okay, back up. First off, what is your name and rank? There was a pause as the computer translated the question, and then another as it processed the response. My name is Byam. I do not know what this ranks is you speak of. You don't have some sort of hierarchy, I asked. The master is in charge of all. 
we obey or suffer the consequences, there is no escape. Rykoff took a tentative step forward. Who is the master? Why did you attack us? The prisoner emitted a strange vibration, which the computer identified as laughter. The more accurate question is, what is the master? I see now that you know nothing. I just assumed people with your technology would be aware of our history. We were once a great species. When I was young, I remember being in awe of the technology we invented. I can say with confidence that we were the greatest builders in our galaxy. The irony is that it was our craftiness that destroyed us. We created an artificial intelligence with a single directive. It was to create a world without scarcity. It was given authority to govern our resources and power our cities. We thought we could create a utopia, ending all want, labor, and suffering. It was too good to be true. The machine pondered the problem. We assumed it would create some grand new form of energy or that it would optimize asteroid mining. But it found a different solution. The only way to avoid scarcity was to control all of the resources in the universe. It would take them by force and use us as its army. Trying to picture the devourers as a peaceful species of inventors was difficult. For years, Federation intelligence had watched them destroy any species that dared to defend their home planet. They encircled stars with absorptive panels and plundered planets, without a second thought for the life forms they rendered extinct. We were told that the enemy could not be reasoned with and that their greed was unparalleled. But if what Bayem said was true, then they were unwilling participants the entire time. Their mindless mechanical behavior made much more sense if they were under the direction of a rogue A. I believed his story. The question was whether Rykoff did. The revelation might steer the Terran Union away from the genocide route but the commander needed to be the one to relay the message. I doubted the humans would believe any information that came from us. Commander Rykoff sipped at his coffee, taking a moment to process what had been said. Why wouldn't anyone fight back or try to destroy it? Of course people did, but they're all dead now. The master had overridden its emergency shutdown function. None of our safeguards worked. It controlled everything, military and industrial, so what was there to fight it with? Its only use for us is as a resource. If we defy it, if we fail, then we are no longer useful. And you see what happens. Once it takes control of everything, I have no doubt it will kill us all anyways, but that will take time. Compliance buys us a few more generations. As I said, there is no way out for us. It must finish its mission. It does not understand anything else. I see, Commander Rykoff muttered. Answer me one more thing. Your weapons are also your inventions? No, our fleet was dreamed up by the Master. Its technology is beyond anything biologicals could conjure, or so we thought. What could be better at killing than a computer, after all? You are the first to defeat it, and you did so with ease. Perhaps I should fear you, but you are our only hope. The commander frowned. Thank you for speaking with us, Bayem. That will be all for now. General, please come with me back to the bridge. I waited until we were out of earshot of the prisoner, then turned to Rykov. What do you think? A troubling story, the human replied. I would be less inclined to believe him if not for the suicide attempt. It doesn't add up without an outside force. I need to share our findings with my government immediately. This changes everything. Will you advise them to call off the bombing? I asked. Commander Rykov sighed. I will. We have to at least try to help. But, but, but the only way to be sure we destroy that thing is to destroy everything on that planet. If we try to evacuate the people, it will just kill them. If we do nothing, it could study our technology and replicate it. Then we're really screwed. I'm not sure we have a choice. General. The commander's words made sense, as much as I hated to hear them. 
We couldn't risk Terran weaponry falling into a murderous A's possession. Someone needed to devise a solid plan in short order before the time to act had passed. There was something else that bothered me, though. It was a point that Byam had mentioned, one that lingered in my mind. The fact that the Terrans had created better tools for warfare than a computer, a machine with the raw power of calculation on its side. It spoke volumes about their species and how naturally killing came to humanity. I felt that I should be more wary, yet I could not help but be charmed by them. For some reason, my gut instinct was that they could be trusted. Perhaps we should fear the humans, but at this point, they were the galaxy's only hope. 